Well, hello, Shannon Robinson. Hello. It's so nice to see you. Um, it's so nice to see you. And I think you have a green tie on, bow tie. Well, I do. I that? And I have a green shirt on. So I don't, yeah, well, I mean, we didn't coordinate this, versions, but you know, I, you I've know, got a green wall. <laughs> no, I know. It's just a green day. I think it's a whole Christmas thing we've got going on. It must be. It <laughs> must be. But we well, match. For people who don't know who you are, so Shanna, you are the, the top plaintiff, I guess that's what you're called, named in this lawsuit in Missouri that ended up striking down all the COVID rules uh, in this breathtaking decision that actually made sense. I mean, for those of us who uh, have lived through these 21, 22 months of, of, of stuff, that was such a such a shocking decision. Uh, were you were you taken aback by the decision yourself? I was, um, I was only because I feel like we've come to um, mistrust the judicial system. You know, I, I know in, in St. Louis area, there have been quite a few lawsuits and it seems every time they don't win because it has to do with COVID. And while this did have to do with COVID, it was more the, uh, the constitution and the fact that the things that were going on were unconstitutional, not just in St. Louis County, but throughout the entire state. So I was a little shocked. But I knew that we were on the right side of the law. I was just shocked that we finally got the right answer. Uh, right. And so the grounds it was decided on was, on one hand, the uh, separation of powers, right? Mm -hmm. And yep. then also the equal protection of the law. Uh, was there anything else or just those two main points? I think, though, there might have been another point. But as far as, um, you know, diving into the legal, legal stuff, I that my lawyer would weigh no a lot mm -hmm. more than I would on that. But, but basically what, what I felt like um, over a year, a year and a half ago, I mean, almost when this first started, mm -hmm. I felt like there was a problem with the fact that an unelected appointed one person, one unelected appointed bureaucrat was making these rules and laws that were shutting down businesses that were closing schools mm -hmm. that told me I could only have 10 people in my home. And, um, from what I could remember in civics lesson, that that just didn't sound right to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so uh, this all began in, in March of 2020. So yeah. uh, tell me how your, uh, your experiences un unfolded. Well, mine was like everyone else's, you know, our kids were doing uh, virtual learning at home mm -hmm. um, in St. Louis County. They closed down the parks. They closed down our County parks. Um, so simple things like, going to the bike park. My, my one son, I have five boys. So my second oldest loved to mountain bike. He couldn't do that anymore. He couldn't go to the parks where there was fishing and all these simple outdoor things that we know are completely healthy and fine. He was, he couldn't do any of them. So my experience was one, it was, it was frustrating for me as a parent trying to work, trying to, to also be the teacher to my children um, and also a mother at the same time, which I don't do very well. I don't know that many parents do, but I don't know that I juggled that very well. But um, what I saw in uh, some of my children and their friends was that was more alarming to me was this mental health decline. Um, mm -hmm. And that is what honestly woke me up very quickly. Mm -hmm. And that would have been over the course of the summer or really pretty quick. That was late. That was late spring. That was so that was probably late April, mid May. Um, that it was, it was apparent enough in, in one of my sons that my husband even said something and we took him into the doctor and um, he was diagnosed with depression and was put on antidepressants for the first time in his life as a teenager. Yeah. Well, he wasn't able to see all of his friends and his life was shattered. It, it, it was shattered. And, um, and I will tell you, he, something in him switched and changed and we're still struggling to get him help and, and for us to see that, that max that we knew pre panic, I don't call it a pandemic. I think you would agree. It's pre panic. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, again, I saw this with a lot of kids. And so that would, that would have been late spring, early summer. And it just got worse in the fall when the schools decided to not send kids back to school. We did not have the option to go in person. And what was happening is there was this movement of parents that all felt the same way. And they were sending in pictures to this Facebook group and videos of their kids just crying or screaming, or this one child was literally hitting himself in the head with his fist because this is not what it's supposed to be. And it just crushed me and it broke my heart. So I, I wasn't in the minority here. Most of the parents I felt that I knew 
in our area were feeling the same way. And so were their children. Yeah. Uh, just that sense of sudden, sudden shift, you know, that you think the world works one way and suddenly it works a completely different way and somebody else is in charge of you. That Yeah, that like doesn't, that. I, I don't, I did not do well with that. I don't, um, I'm a bit stubborn and feisty. And so when someone has control over me, I don't, I don't like that, but it wasn't even in their best interest. What was happening was not in the best interest overall for our kids. I, I was, um, like I said, I got connected with some parents and we started looking at the data, just not even listening to the news. We, we got on our, our local site, our local County site was looking, we we're looking at the data. We we're looking at our state data. We're like, this doesn't make sense. Kids aren't getting sick. This was again, late summer, 2020. Um, and it didn't make sense to us. And it was very clear at that time that something else was going on. And it was very frustrating for parents to, to get what we felt our children needed. Yeah. Um, well, now at some point, and this must have happened after, uh, after the schools didn't open in the fall, you, you thought there's, there's got to be some, some way to challenge this. Because, I mean, you know, this, I said this happened to millions of people. Uh, how did it happen that you decided to pursue a kind of a, a legal route? And have you ever done anything like this before in your life? I've, I've never done anything like this before in my life. What I found was I, um, I surrounded myself with people who were smarter than me and who educated me on government and how it worked because I knew the basics of it, but I didn't really understand how it worked in St. Louis County and how our county is set up. So I started reading our county charter. I started reading um, some regulations and statutes in the state. Um, and so what, what I did at first is I started going to the county council um, meetings and speaking and trying to get their attention. What are we doing? Why, where's the data? Has the health department who's, who's closed everything down, have they given you the data? You're really the legislative body, right? So that's where I first started was at my county legislative body saying, what can you do to help? And they're like, our hands are tied, our hands are tied. And I was like, well, we got to find somebody who will help us go above you then to the state. Because everyone um, was using these two regulations, um, our county, or St. Louis County, I, I've since moved, Franklin County, they were doing the same thing with quarantining. And so we realized early on that that was the problem. And so we thought we just, we've got to take it to the state level. And, and we filed this December of 2020. Well, now, uh, uh, but, you know, when people think about doing something like this, the first thought is, gosh, I need a, you can't do it on your own, right? So you, you, you no. want to have the, uh, the advice of an attorney, but you know, most people wouldn't even know where to begin on trying to find an attorney that would even take the case. And that it is true. There's a lot of attorneys who won't, they're, they're afraid um, there's going to be backlash. And there was a lot of parents who have been afraid of the backlash as well. Um, and so their names haven't been on things, you know, they, they're afraid to speak up, but I was, I was fortunate enough to find a lawyer who was um, willing to do that and take that on. And like, like I said, I'm a plaintiff. Uh, there's a gentleman, Ben Brown, He's actually running for our state Senate and there is a church. So, um, you know, for me, again, this is maybe the feistiness in me. I, I wasn't afraid. I wasn't afraid to put my name out there. I just, I could see what my children were going through and that hurt more than anything that anyone could say about me or attack me or my businesses. Uh, were you worried about the expense? I mean, sometimes when people are considering, you know, suing this or suing that or calling a lawyer, you suddenly, you know, concerned that, that every minute you're on the phone, you know, you're right. It's, it's going to be, you know, a hundred bucks or something. Uh, and next thing you know, you've got a $5,000 legal bills with nothing <laughs> to show for it. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I wasn't, I, that wasn't my concern at all. I just wanted it right. I wanted it fixed. I'm very black and white. And it, they were not, um, the County was pointing back at parents or people like me, freedom thinkers and saying, we're the problem. And we're not following the rules. And I wanted to say, you're not following the rules. Mm -hmm. You're not following the rules. And so that was my concern. It wasn't, it wasn't financial. And, and luckily um, you could read in the order that the, all of the, the lawyer fees are paid for through the I lawsuit. That. So I saw that. that's a blessing. Right, right at the end. That was a great <laughs> little satisfying coda to the, to, it the was. to the decision. Uh, so the first steps were you contact the lawyer, the lawyer's talking to you and he's like, well, you've got a good point. Let's see, let's see what we can do about pushing this thing through. Um, but a lot of time uh, had to go by, right? Then he found other plaintiffs. Yes, yes, she did. Um, I actually she... know Ben. Yes, it's 
Ben owns a restaurant in St. Louis County. So when the health department closed all of the restaurants, he was a big advocate for that. So it, it was really easy to find like the church because they were outspoken. There were many of us. Mm-hmm. And so it was easy to find people that were willing and wanting and feeling the same way to go forward with this. And, uh, and, and so this was, uh, so you're sure of the, that you're going forward with this uh, sometime in uh, December or January? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we um, we filed it in in December of 2020. Mm-hmm. And then and then how long did you have to wait for the for the for finally to get on the docket or for the courts finally to to hear the case? Um, you know, a lot of time went by. I believe it was September. I think there was a meeting this this past September, obviously, um, on when we can actually have the the hearing, and the hearing was October. Um, so I don't, I don't know why it took so long. That's, that's the part that I don't understand. Um, we have been very patient. You know, we kept it pretty quiet mm-hmm. because what we have found, and maybe you have seen too, when you file a lawsuit during COVID, COVID trumps everything. So if you talk about it and you're like, here, we're, this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. And then you get media involved. And, you know, we just wondered if the media would would sway the judge one way or the other. And we just didn't want that. We just wanted it to be a pure ruling. And so we actually kept it quiet for a very long time. No one really knew we were doing it at all. Yeah. And when you say a hearing, so there, there was like an actual, was a zoom hearing or how, how did this, how did this take place? Um, no. So um, in the middle of, I can't remember the date, October 12th, I believe it was, we went to Jeff city in Cole County, which is our state capitals in Jefferson city. Um, and that's where the, the, the hearing was. And so my, it was my lawyer and uh, the attorney general's office and me and the judge. And that was it. What about the other plaintiffs? They weren't uh, with you. No, no, they, they didn't come. And it was, it was really short. I just, I want it to be there. I, I just am very passionate about it and very invested. And so I mm-hmm. basically begged that <laughs> I just need to be there. I just need to see it and hear it and understand it. So I don't know how any of this works, but on TV, you, you get, you, you testify. Did you testify? I, I did not. I, I signed an, an affidavit explaining mm-hmm. everything, you know, mm-hmm. and, and had everything. So I did not have to get up at all. I just, um, I have poured everything into making sure kids and businesses are okay in St. Louis County. I run a group of 11,000 um, citizens here. And so for me, it's just been an emotional attachment and involvement. And I just need it to be there. For that moment that we've waited for. Was the Department of Health there uh, contradicting you or no? No, no. Just the attorney general's office who Mm. um, was their lawyer. They defended them. So, no, it was it was so quiet. I couldn't believe it. I thought it would have gotten leaked at some point. So I was grateful that it it was it was done the right way. Well, part of this, you know, part of this shocks me and maybe you feel the same way. But when the lockdowns happened, I thought, where are the courts? Where are the courts? Where are the courts? (laughs) Uh, you know, I thought we had a constitution. I thought we had a bill of rights. Every state has its own bill of rights, its own rules. And, um, mm-hmm. but the, the, the court seemed silent. I mean, a lot of them were shut down for COVID. Right. So, um, so suddenly we were all left at the mercy of, of these health, uh, bureaucrats, bureaucracies. Yeah, we were. And they, some of them are still shut down just depending on what, what County you live in. And that was the frustrating part for me mm. in St. Louis County. My kids weren't first allowed to play sports. And then when they were allowed, they had to wear a mask, you know, while you're exercising and you had silly things like you can't high five your own teammate. You can't, that was that there was 250 pages of mandates coming from the health department. It was ridiculous. But what I could do, I could, I could drive 20, 25 minutes from my home where I lived in St. Louis County and be in a completely different County. And my kids had completely different freedoms. That's what was frustrating and aggravating as a parent, feeling like no one is listening. You've pushed me into a corner. And so I just kind of came out with the gloves on. I didn't know what else to do, but it just was wrong. I wanted to know where were the teachers fighting for the kids? Where's the child psychologist? Where's the doctors? Where are all of these people? Yeah, yeah. I know this. Yeah, as the questions we were all asking, it went on and on and on and on. I mean, it wasn't two weeks flat in the curve. It was no. A year, then a year and a half. Well, and they're still trying to mandate things in St. Louis County up until, you know, the, the order early, early this past week. But um, there's still some parts of the country and the parts of the state of Missouri that 
don't look like other parts. And that is the part that I don't understand. It's just, you're at the mercy of where you live and who's in charge, who you voted in. Even now, even after the order. So after the thing came down, uh, I had heard from somebody else, although I didn't see any coverage of it, uh, that the state's attorney general or something acquiesced to the decision so there would be no appeal. It's, it's, it's a done deal. Is, is that your understanding too? That's my understanding. It was a very, you're right. It was a very simple response saying, you know, we will comply with this. So I don't, I don't know how else to take that. I don't, I'm assuming that's what they will do, but I, I don't, you, you never know anymore. So the very first time that there was any public information about this uh, and about your role in this was when the decision came down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was, there was a little bit um, that kind of came out in October. I've, I've been on a few radio shows here in mm-hmm. St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Um, and so people, un- people knew something was happening, but I don't think they understood the significance of it. Um, and quite honestly, I don't know that I can fully comprehend the significance of it, you know. Um, right. So there was a little bit of, of talk, but nothing, nothing like like this. Well, you know, it's, it was a little frustrating when I, of course, you know, I was I was amazed when I saw the decision and I read it and I got so excited. And I posted the decision on Brownstone and talked about it and highlighted some of the judges uh, remarks on this because they were so prescient yeah. and uh, yeah. powerful. Um, but I don't know, Shannon, I mean, like. I know that it probably got a lot of attention in Missouri and I know the Mm -hmm. the Epoch Times covered it and Brownstone covered it. And uh, it was all over Twitter for 48 hours. Right. Um, But, but, you know, I'm not the best Googler in the world, but my, my impression was that the New York Times is yet even to mention the decision. I haven't, I haven't seen it either. Um, I don't, necessarily go out looking for it, you know, every, every 10 minutes, but I, I haven't seen it there. There was a lot at first um, in this, in Missouri, it's, it's all over. Um, um, but again, it was, it was this 48 hour thing. And, and now I, I almost feel like now what we're hearing is, well, the teachers unions are getting together and figuring out what they, what they need to do. And it's, it's again, this passing the buck, like nobody yeah. wants to make decisions and, and it's, right. it's frustrating. So now it's almost like, well, we're ready for phase two. What, what does that look like? What do we have right. to fight against next? Well, that's really my sense. It was like this decision came down and I felt like this for a number of times over the course of, of the entire, as you say, panic um, that, okay, now finally we have the decision that's going to make a difference. Okay. Now, finally, uh, this, this study is out, you know, that COVID doesn't affect, it doesn't, as you, as you very brilliantly put it, doesn't make kids sick, which is a funny uh, phrase that we don't use anymore. <laughs> we don't right. talk about, right. Right. We, don't, we just talk about symptomatic or asymptomatic positive yeah. tests. And we have strange language. I like the way you just said it doesn't get kids sick. You know, that's, no. that's right. But so these studies come out, you know, these, this, and this court decision that takes place. And I was, uh, just thrilled by it, but and and you know this hope it ended as it pertains to all of Missouri, right? I mean, yes, yeah, and not just Cole County, but the whole state. Uh, yeah. And other states can look at it and copy it and cite it as a precedent, especially since it's it's apparently going to stand. But um, but one wonders still because you know I'm talking to you now, uh, uh, you know after. Omicron, you know, has made all the headlines and and Anthony Fauci was on on national or national television this morning saying we might have to have more lockdowns uh, if it gets bad. Uh, it's almost as if there's and Scott Alice describes this, too, in, in his book that I just finished. Uh, there, there's a strange machine that's just kind of sort of operating uh, without regard to you know, the science uh, and now, without regard to judicial precedent, I mean, you expect Fauci to say something like, we might have to lock down everybody again, except for Missouri, where there's that court decision. But no, he, <laughs> he didn't say that. And, and one wonders, too, you know, if the New York Times doesn't report on it, you know, did it really happen? It's, it's, it's strange. Do you agree with that? I, I, I would agree with that. And, and your point, um, you know, where, where were the professionals? That's what, I, that's what a big group of us were saying when they shut down and locked our, our kids out of school to get a free and fair education too, by the way, is, um, you know, my kids in the state of Missouri, we have the right, our children have a right to a free um, education and it can't, it can't suck. It doesn't say that in, it doesn't say that in print, but zoom is terrible. But what I'm, you know, your point is 
it, it's where are the professionals, like I've said before, where are the economists, where, where are the teachers, where are all of these people? It's like they can't even have a say. There is someone behind the curtain pulling the strings. And yeah. it's, it's, it was weird. It's like we got the Cole County and then now we have Omicron. I'm like, I didn't even do we do we name the flu variants? I think we just call it the flu. I don't know how long this is going to go on, but I, I do feel like in St. Louis County, because it has been so different there. Um, it, it's just, even though Missouri is, is a red state, we have a Republican governor, St. Louis County is not like that at all, but I feel like the dam's about to break. And if they try to close schools again mm. or close our businesses, I think it's just going to break wide open. Their, their people are, are not, um, they won't comply. They just won't do it anymore. Yeah, that's interesting. You felt um, what happened to you personally after the decision came out? Did you get a lot of your friends contacted? You get a lot of emails from around the country. People wanting to interview you. How did that go? No, nobody, nobody really knows. You know, knows who I am, which is is totally fine because it's not about me. It's not about any of the other plaintiffs. It's about the law. You know, and um, I just want to make sure my my biggest drive for this is to make sure that our kids have the chance to be normal to be free. And that's, that's all I want, but it's, it's been pretty quiet. I mean, people who are kind of in the fight, I don't even like to call it a fight. The, those of us who are advocating for our freedoms and our liberties, they, they knew about it and they were very excited and they understand the significance, but um, I don't even know if my mom knows or my grandma knows, you know, cause we've kept it quiet for so long. Um, and, and I'm okay with that. I, but I do want, I do want people to know and understand the law and how that has changed so that they can use that to their benefit. Does, do your children know that their, their mother's made history? <laughs> um, no, they think that sometimes I just speak my mind too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's for you. No, actually, a few of my, my kids are, they're, they're really proud. And my one son, Max, who struggles with the mental health, he actually came with me to Jeff City. We've been, again, we've been fighting this fight for a year. And it was in November, he went with me to Jeff City. And again, me not being involved in, in anything like this, or even in politics, we just went door to door to state reps and senators and said, will you listen to us? All you're hearing is the one side of the lockdowns, which affect businesses financially. And that's really, that's devastating, but you need to hear this other aspect of it and how this affects our children. So Max, who's been with me since the beginning, he's really excited and proud of it. Yeah. And now we have this court decision. So uh, you're in a position now to at least cite the the case and you know, oh to, yes yeah uh, to a school board or a local official who's enforcing mask mandates or social distancing a local business and or whatever capacity restrictions in fact let me ask you about the capacity restrictions because i think uh am i right that the judge mentioned in passing that something about the capacity restrictions affecting you personally right so um last year it was around november the health department said we cannot have more than 10 people over in our own personal home, even if we're masked, even if we're social distance in my own personal home. Well, I have five kids. So there's seven of us just in my own family. I can't have my sister over. She's got four kids. You know, I can't have friends over according to this mandate. This a legal mandate. This goes back to the 250 pages. I, there was a lot of stuff that was very ridiculous. It, it just didn't even make sense. I mean, we had zero freedoms. Yes, it was true also in Massachusetts. When one wonders, you know, this this ten this ten person uh, rule, uh, one wonders where this comes from. It's not from any science. It's uh, and and also, what can you say about, you know, a country in, in which the government tells you how many people you can have in your own home? I mean, have we ever experienced anything like this, to your knowledge, uh, in our lifetimes or in anybody's lifetime? I don't. I don't think so. And you know. To your point, what does this say about a country that does this to our children, too? I mean, it's just been it's been devastating for everyone. Um, and I feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel with this order. And you, you said it earlier. It, it was brilliant. And the thing that I love most about it is it was almost written. It was so simple that there's a lot of times I'll read legal things and I'm like, I don't know what that says. This was written in a way that normal people like me can understand. So we can cite it. Not only can we cite it, we understand. We understand what we're saying. That is a big deal. Right. That's a big deal. So I'm really excited for this to get into parents' hands. Oh, it was great. And they're and like, it, it, was, it was so good. They're like, what does this mean? I'm like, just read it. I'm yeah, just going to highlight it. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah. yeah. 
Well, he has this language, uh, the judge. Uh, first of all, he quotes Montesquieu, which is just amazing. Yes, <laughs> but, uh, and that was so good. That was so mm-hmm. good. But then goes on to say, look, you can't have a system in which the legislature, uh, uh, you know, empowers a, 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 a the executive to to do the legislating, and the executive empowers a, a bureaucracy to further do the uh, the the, um, uh, the legislating, and then that bureaucracy empowers one person to make some one decision over everybody else. This is a complete violation of the Missouri Constitution and and everything we stand for. And the even quote in there is, it was simple enough that a middle schooler understands it in their civics class or something funny like that. And I, I just, there was a few times when I was reading through it, I just laughed out loud. I thought this is, he's got a sense of humor there, but um, he got straight to the point. He, he was yeah. not confusing how he felt and well, what he felt the law should be. Everybody should read it because the, yeah. the, the biggest effect of reading that decision is you suddenly realize you're not crazy. <laughs> you know? Right. And that's and that's how we felt. That's how at least again, I'll speak St. Louis County. That's how we felt the media. The media is terrible here. And you feel like you're alone when the county executive who is in charge of our county gets up every every Monday and Wednesday and does his brief at 830. Um, he, he says the majority of you are doing the right thing. The majority of you major and you you felt like you were alone. And it's it's very clear in the last year and a half that I'm not the minority. Right. Yeah. yeah, so many people are with you, and and uh, uh, this insanity was visited upon us, and in the craziest ways, yeah. and, and as you say, designed to make us all feel like, uh, you know, because we want liberty, um, and the freedom of association, basic, basic, you know, right to education, that kind of stuff, that that we were somehow uh, promoting sickness and death, you know. Uh, they're not one in the same. They're not yeah. one in the same. I don't want anyone to suffer, but right. I also don't want my rights to be taken away and I don't want to see my children suffer. So that, that's the balance. And we, you know, we've been called by even our elected leaders and, and even the, um, the, our health director called us a, a, what do they call it? Lunatic fringe people. He, just this week, he sent an email out that got leaked and our, our elected, our elected officials in St. Louis County, that's what they think of us. So it's sad. I mean, it's sad when all we're wanting um, is what we've been given, which is our freedoms. And, and I've, I said this um, on the tweet, I just feel like we've been looking for loopholes to our freedom. Yeah. Freedoms don't have loopholes. Right. Uh, yeah. All you really are expecting is what everybody in this country expected uh, in early 2020 or late 2019, just basically the right to live your life and mm-hmm. organize your life uh, according to just normal principles of your own choosing. And suddenly that was, you know, much to the shock of everybody was just taken away in the name of, of public health. And I, I don't know, um, you talk about recovery within your own family, but you know, we've got, we've got a, we've got a nation that needs to recover a whole world that needs to recover from this. Oh, we, and we, and we need to start now. I mean, we need to start right now, but, but you're right. Everything was trumped by COVID. You know, you, you, you don't have rights. Sorry, COVID. You can't do this. Sorry, COVID. That's just what it was. It didn't matter. It didn't matter what your response was. It was sorry, COVID. That wins. I wonder how many more decisions like this it will take. I I I, I had hoped that the Missouri decision would be a, a real twenty turning point, and maybe it is. I mean, some people feel that way, and I'm I feel that way too. But still, the struggle doesn't seem quite over yet, does it? It doesn't only because I I feel like I can't. I don't trust anymore. I don't, I don't trust that this will stay. I, I know we're on the right side of the law. That's not the yeah. issue. I just don't trust anymore. And that's a dark place to be too, I think. And, um, and who, who do you not trust? Media, public health? Media, public health. Um, I trust the judicial system now, but there is a part of me that wonders if it will slip away. Cause I just, I just feel like, I don't know, we've been, we've been chained for the last year and a half. I never questioned never questioned government before. Maybe I should have. I, I, I was naive and I will admit that. But um, I, I, I don't know how else to explain. I just don't trust the people who have been put in charge of my well-being, my family's well-being and our rights and our liberties. I don't trust that anymore. But this ruling actually has given me a lot of hope and I hope it's given uh, all of Missourians hope and maybe even the country. And, and it's people like you that are talking about it. 
and understand the significance that's exciting because that's all we want to do as plaintiffs. We just want to be able to help. That's just, we just want Americans to, to um, feel like there is hope at the end of the tunnel. Well, this is one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you is, first of all, just to find out what it's like to be on the inside like that. I mean, it's extraordinary <laughs> what you did. Um, but beyond that, yeah, yeah. I've been frustrated that um, it hadn't been more broadly covered, you know, and and yeah. I don't want to be up to the Brownstone Institute. I'd rather not have to be in this role of uh, yeah. you know, making up for the failure of, of the New York Times. But what are you going to do? You know, what, what are you going to do in times like this? You just have to. And I, and I. And I wonder too, if people just feel like, oh, it's just another lawsuit. It's, it's going to go away. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to get people to listen. You know, even if I've mailed it on to, you know, a Fox news or like mm-hmm. New York times, um, they just don't take it seriously. Or they're like, who is this person? She's, you know, whatever, we're just going to ignore her. And, um, and I just like, we have, yes, lunatic fringe, like we have something important to tell you and to share. Um, but you ha- you can't make people listen. You can't make people care enough to want to read it and, and cover it. Well, Shannon, thank you so much for the, uh, the time you spent with me today. It means so much to me and, and for your extraordinary work. And I'll do everything I can to get this interview out there. And uh, thank I you. Know, I... uh, it strikes me that the only way we're really going to uh, fix things, uh, make things the way the, the right way is by doing things exactly like you just did. It took persistence and, and patience and, yeah. and courage. And, uh, you know, it's the kind of thing that can possibly rebuild in light of this calamity. Yeah, we, and we need to rebuild. I don't know that we, we have a choice. So I, I thank you so much for having me on and talking with you. It was, it was a pleasure. And um, I appreciate you getting, getting the word out. It means a lot. Thanks so much, Hannah. All the thank best. Thank you. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.